died um, sometime last night. It was right before we saw the majestic porcupine yep. with all the Boy Scouts. Of course, probably the most exciting part of the whole trip and then no no video recording of it. But uh, <laughs> So here we are, kind of our final thoughts on the trip. We're driving home uh, in Memorial Day traffic in the rain and just kind of contemplating, thinking about what we, you know, in Scouts we do this thing called Thorns and Roses. Um, where we talk about campouts, we talk about what we liked, and what we did, what worked, and what didn't work, and uh, yeah, and, um, and sometimes we add a bud to something we would do differently or grow for next time. So, Frank, do you want to give your thorns and roses? I'd say that my rose would be our last night. Last night at camp, we camped with a Boy Scout troop, and I've never hung out with Boy Scouts before, and I loved it. And the little kid that came up and kept talking to us about slugs and he gave a sermon and it just it made a lot of sense just like seeing little kids out in nature and their scout leaders masters were so nice we didn't have a place to camp like we almost put the tent on the road and they said that if the best spot was under their hammock that they would take it down but we were able to find the tent spot and it's just really nice. Yeah. Did you have any thorns on the trip? Yeah, I didn't like the snowmobile trails, the roadblocks, just not being in normal nature. The mud was really hard, lots of blisters. I'd say my big fault was just wearing those in Gingy, like actual hiking socks and not doing double layers because I kept all the water just on my toes and my big toe turned into a blister. My pinky toes were blisters. So today they feel fine. I just have my liner socks and then normal wool socks, but close your mind. How many miles did your pedometer say we did? Do you remember? 64.69 from Friday until we got off the trail at 10.30 today. And that's everything, like uh, spur trails, filtering water, going to the bathroom, but we walked into every single campsite and inspected it and have, you've probably seen it by now, a review of each one. Yeah, and the Fox Farm one was like a half mile in, a half mile out. Yeah, 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 we walked a lot. Yep. Um, any buds, anything you would do differently next time? Um, I can't really remember. Yeah. That's okay, we think of one. Yeah. Well, I have similar uh, thorns and roses. I would say my rose also was camping with the Boy Scouts. I actually thought they were a hoot. They were very polite to us, uh, but then just also hearing their conversations and thinking of my own Boy Scout group was very sweet for me. It just felt like a little bit of a gift, and we didn't think we were going to squeeze in, but they made room for us, and it was a free tent pad site and I think there were like, I don't know. Like us, there's probably six or seven tents. Yeah, yeah, we were jammed in tight, but we all had room. And then, um, oh, and sorry, I'm like part of that, also the rose was, we saw a porcupine last night and I'd never seen one in the wild and this guy was just so fun to watch. And um, so that was really, really great. And then if I had a thorn, um, I'd hiked through mud before in the last video, you saw us hiking um, the section north, and I thought that was a lot of mud, and I was kind of making a big deal out of it, but that was so much, that mud was good mud, compared to the mud we had, um, and I don't mean to sound like I'm bragging about mud, but it was like shin deep in some spots today, and it was just killing us, so I've got some really sore ankles and sore feet, and just, it was just nothing but twisting and slogging, so that would just be, and that would be a little tough, um, no matter what time of year you're on that section. Uh, Carrie today said yeah. that 
that section, so we're talking about Mark 2301 is like often standing water year round. So if you're going on that section of the trail, just prepare to get wet and um, take care of your feet. And then my bud or the thing I learned, um, you know, just really impressed that my feet held up the way they did considering the battering they took. But next time, the only gear that I didn't really use um, that I thought would be essential was my umbrella. Uh, I used to a little in the rain, but it just kind of, I'd probably leave that at home next time. I didn't really think about all the down trees that we'd be climbing under. There were a lot of ground, down trees on this trail, and so I just got kind of hung up on stuff. So we'll save that for day hiking. Um, but yeah, those are my thorns and roses. Um, I think my blood, I remembered it, like yeah. last night pushing to the next camp. Oh, so yeah. we had done, about that. I don't know, was it 13, 14 miles? Yeah. And we got to camp early at like 3, Very 3.30. Yeah. And the next camp was just a little bit over 4 miles. But if we knocked off those miles, got to that camp, then we only had 6 or so miles till we were off trail and home. And even though we were ready to go to bed at like 3.30, we heard, we just kept pushing on and I think it was for the best. Oh, I thought that was a very good decision. Even though we were hobbling by the time we got into camp, yep. I was so glad. Today, when we saw the conditions of the trail, it rained last night, so a section that would normally be muddy and standing water was just deep um, today. So, yeah, I think that helped us out. We didn't oh, have totally. to go so far. Um, one last thing I would say for anybody thinking of uh, hiking this section of the trail is that I hear people say this section is boring or not as nice or it's flat. I I actually think it's, it, this, this section of the trail stands on its own. There's plenty of beauty to be seen. There are flowers that I've never seen before. There oh, are mushrooms. Mushrooms. Oh, we took so many pictures of mushrooms. And uh, just some overlooks and just beautiful things. And, you know, I think just be prepared for there are flat spots, snowmobile trails, and there's a heavily deforested or forest logging, whatever, logging, yeah. logging operation. And just kind of, if you're prepared for that, um, you'll find this section beautiful. I, I really liked it a lot. I thought it was great. Even with the uh, the epic mud slog, um, it built character, right? Yeah, and like we could tell like the closer we were getting into the harbors, we could feel the breeze off Lake Superior. Oh yeah, that was so, so like, cool. We could tell that we were getting Close, and I think we could kind of see the trail progressing to more of like normal SHT and like the North Shore, and that was cool. Yeah. If you had to do it all over again, would you do it Novo or Silvo? I would do Novo. But because I just, the, you're so excited when you start, so the excitement just overcome, you overcome the boringness of the snowmobile trails. Yeah, because you're just excited to be there. I would do. I would do it the same way. Yeah. And I think if you went solo, you'd have a lot of climbs to start with, because we yeah. went very down. Oh, that's right. Yeah, if you go no bow, uh, you end with a big downhill walk into two harbors um, instead of a big uphill walk. So, yeah, yeah that worked out for us. Anyway, well, anything else we want to um, say before we turn off the GoPro? Just be prepared for mud. Be prepared for mud. Oh, I will say something. I don't care how cheesy it sounds. This map of this section is brown, and I'm calling it the mud map from now on because it is brown, and the whole trail is brown. And I think it's brown all year round. So prepare for mud, and uh, happy trails. Bye.